we like to first again welcome everyone and we also like to wish you all a very happy new year and appreciate each of you for your contributions to PDX with in the year of 2023. As you all may be aware, if you're a regular participant, PDX Wood has events all over Portland and beyond. And we wanna take a moment to acknowledge our indigenous Oregonians, as well as the historic legacy of racism and settler colonialism. PDX recognized that the ongoing violence, trauma, and erosion indigenous communities face is a part of settler colonist structures, and we are actively fighting against it. Portland is located on the stolen lands and traditional village sites of the Multnomah, Clackamas, Clackamas, Chinook, Tamalatin, Kalapalu, Malalo, and many other tribes who made their homes along the Columbia River. We endeavor to have this be more than just word. The tech industry is building the future of our world, and it's up to us to ensure that it's a future for all of us. To find out more about how we are supporting the future of Indigenous communities, please visit our site at pdxwit.org slash land acknowledgement, and you also can find that link in your chat. Again, my name is Shalanda. I am part of PDX with and I am here in the lens as the operations and event specialist. I like to appreciate each of you who have been with me since my tender here and appreciate all of your support thus far. But also one of the things that drew me to PDX with was its mission. And PDX mission is to build a better tech industry by creating access, dismantling inequities and fueling belongings. Event like this one is one way we advance our mission and you can learn more about the work and how to get involved as well as how to support PDX with at pdxwit.org. Yolanda. Got it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> also, we like to appreciate all of our sponsors, and we like to give special sight to our platinum and our executive level sponsors, Autodesk, AWS, First Tech, Prosper Portland, Eve Litter, D DT, Matrix, Nike, Van Hooven, Jesus, Olive Tree, Cambia, because of these sponsors, as well as our silver sponsors and our bronze sponsors, we would like to appreciate them and thank you for their contributions. We couldn't do the work without the support of our sponsors. Also, if you're with us today and by chance at this event or any events in the future or in the past even, please share those photos with us. And here are the various links in which you can do so. And we encourage you uh, to also take a look at our sites and look at where you may be captured in some of our activities and some of our events uh, through our uh, capturing as well with our social media. Today's agenda is, as you know, we are welcoming and in our announcements and our introductions. Today, we're excited that we will be having the presentation of our member survey results that many of you may have contributed to. Also, we're going to discuss how you can help support PDX with and towards the end, we are going to open it up for questions and answers that you may have about PDX with and where we're moving forward in our initiatives. And then we will be promptly ending by 1 p.m. So thank you in advance again for being here. We have an exciting upcoming event in which we're doing a collaboration for the Silicon Forest Tech Summit, harnessing the power of diversity. It will be this Saturday, January the 20th. You can find out more information on our website as well as register. Also, if you are one of our volunteers, we encourage you to consider lending your time to this event. And also, if you are one of our PDX with community members that are seeking to get in the tech field and to get more engaged in this area, to come out, they're going to have several uh, speakers there. They're going to have tabling there. They're going to be doing resume review as well as LinkedIn headshots if you need it. There will be a host of activities uh, there that can help you along that journey, as well as see what's currently happening within the tech space. And we invite you to either come as a participant and also would appreciate if you could come as a volunteer and you can find out more information via the link um, in your chat. 
our announcements is volunteer team engagement. If you are looking for a place to lend your gifts and talents or your time, we encourage you to go to PDXWIT website and sign up to uh, look at what volunteer opportunities are available, as well as if you are someone who are interested in mentoring, we definitely have a need for that. And we ask that you consider volunteering as a mentor through PDX with we all have something that we can teach and share we all have something that we can contribute to the greater good of someone else's so we always say you know you lend a hand back while you yet are moving forward and so we actually consider that and just know that if you think you're not in a position to vol or to be a mentor that I can almost assure you that you have something to offer that is of value and that also would be instrumental to someone else's journey. At this time, we're going to have a PDX with uh, Executive Director Hazel Valdez come and share and how you can be a part, Hazel. Good afternoon, everyone, and Happy New Year. Hopefully you are all staying warm. Um, this slide basically kind of explains itself. If you have ever worked with PDX with, or have been affected to PDX with, we have a um, donor program called Pay It Forward. And what it does is it asks all, I'm asking all of you to consider donating to PDX with. We did not make our give guide goal of $50,000 and that, um, it could be the nature of the economy. It could be uh, that folks were not able to give, but you know, if you have um, some discretionary funds that you'd like to donate to help us continue our work, we'd appreciate it. Uh, just visit our website and go to the donate page and it is the Pay It Forward campaign. Thank you. Thank you, Hazel, for that share out. And if you all have any questions at any time, you can always feel free to reach out to us or reach out to Hazel, but definitely whatever support you can provide would be greatly appreciated. At this time, I am very excited to have the opportunity to present our presenter for this evening. Uh, as you all are aware, this is PDX SWIT's first 2024 event, and we're excited to start it off with the town hall. And it's going to be presented by our very own Isabel Rodriguez. Isabel Rodriguez is PDX SWIT Research and Data Analytic Manager. Isabel brings a data-driven approach and an anti-oppressive lens that emphasized the needs for systematic changes. Isabel has a very deep regards uh, for PDX mission, uh, is very, very amazing in the work that she does. And if you are looking at those newsletters or any of our share out and reach out, just know that there is someone by the name of Isabel Rodriguez in the background who's had a hand in it. PDX Wood is incredibly fortunate to have her lens of talents and skills and her passion for the work that we do. And following Isabel presentation, you will be hearing back again from Hazel Valdez, our executive director for closing remarks. Meantime, we ask that you settle in, write down questions if you have them. We will have some room for that later on. And just take a listening ear to learn more about where we're at. At this time, Isabel, it's my pleasure to present you as you present this body of work to our community members. Thank you so much, Isabel. Thank you, Yolanda. Um, would you mind um, advancing us to? Absolutely. All right. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, that, that's perfect. Um, thank you again. And thank all of you for being here, uh, taking your lunch hour to be with us this afternoon. Um, I have been with PDX WIT since 2021. Um, and in that tenure, uh, I believe member survey questions, or rather a subset of them, were always tacked on to a larger survey, which um, many of you may uh, known as the State of the Community Survey. In 2023, we decided to separate it out and make it its own thing and put the, you know, the focus of the survey directly on you, our community, and our members. Uh, so I'm really excited to uh, share the results with you this afternoon. And could I get the next slide, please? 
So we'll start with a little bit of context and survey details. The survey was administered between October and November of last year. This uh, was sent out as part of a newsletter campaign to an audience of about 8,000 in via the PDX WIT newsletter. So if you're not subscribed, um, there's a link to that on our website as well. You can go ahead and uh, make sure that you uh, don't miss out on, on things like this. There were a total of 96 recipients, not ideal, but grateful kind of given that it was, you know, the end of the year. And I'm sure we we all have all kinds of inboxes and, and you know, things uh, calling for our attention. Um, and no incentives were offered for response, uh, for respondent participation. And we did that in order to keep these surveys completely anonymous and confidential. Could I get the next slide, please? So first looking at our respondents by the numbers, just a bit of a, a demographic overview. I categorized these into three different um, kind of sections. The first is identity-based demographics. So of our respondents, 22% identified as BIPOC, 35% identified as LGBTQ+, 29% identified as having a disability or accessibility needs, and 12% identified as being an immigrant or refugee. Looking at our class-based demographics, um, so the majority of our respondents made over 75K, with the single largest group making between 100 and 150K, so that, that one group being about 31% of the respondents. And then looking at place-based, so 16% of our respondents lived outside of Oregon, so in states like Washington, California, New York, um, and more. And of those who lived within Oregon, 35% actually live outside of Multnomah County. So fairly large, um, fairly large group of folks who don't kind of live in the, in the city core. Next slide, please. And then we looked at the different roles that our members have. Um, and actually this uh, list here is only the top 10. I believe the list is, is almost uh, two dozen individual roles. And that also includes students as their own category. Um, but looking at the landscape, our members really do have a mix of technical and non-technical roles. Of course, the largest group um, you know, are those who are programmers and developers followed very closely by leadership. Um, but our you know, members occupy a you know, wide variety of different roles, including marketing, IT, um, data science, um, some things that were not on this list are things like technical writers, um, folks who are in the data privacy or cybersecurity space. And one thing that's interesting and uh, something that PDX will, will keep in mind as we're developing our programming is not just looking at the jobs that our members have, but the jobs that our members want to have. And so we see something, for example, data science, data analytics, statistics. Um, we have folks that are in that job, but actually the desired job, a lot of folks are wanting to move out of those roles. Um, whereas things like programmer, developer, uh, leadership, product manager even, or customer related jobs, um, you know, folks are wanting to more so move into those types of roles. So again, just something that, um, you know, we'll kind of keep in our minds as we're developing, you know, uh, events and talks and, and, and things of this nature. Next slide, please. Um, continuing to look at sort of the employment section of things. So about 65% of our respondents were reported being employed full time, um, but nearly a quarter, so 23% were impacted by tech layoffs um, that we all know occurred uh, between 2022 and last year. And of the 18% who were not employed but were looking for work, nearly half of those were impacted by tech layoffs. Um, so again, uh, using this survey as a way to kind of keep the pulse on our community and then see where, where they're at and how we can um, continue to provide impact. Next slide, please. So looking at uh, PDX, what's impact, and this is asking folks, you know, what really changed for you as a result of engaging with our programming or engaging with our community? Um, so 66% um, have grown their professional networks. 58% feel more capable of advocating for others in the workplace, um, which I'm heartened by. 57% have broadened their understanding of social issues. 
and nearly 8% found a job as a result of engaging with PDF SWIT. And this is through, um, can even be through things like referrals, finding something on the job board or networking with somebody um, at an event. And I do see that folks are dropping questions in the chat. Um, I think that's perfect, keep it up, and then we'll do a dedicated Q&A session um, towards the end of this uh, presentation. Next slide, please. Um, another uh, really heartening thing to see is that members find uh, value in our programming. So this uh, graph here is comparing the programming that folks engage with and what they say they really find the most value in. Um, and of course, uh, this is kind of proportionally, this all makes sense, right? Events in the job board are things that are available really to most of our members. Um, so these would have the largest share of the pie. Things like mentorship, the scholarship program, and the speakers bureau, those are tailored more towards like cohorts and smaller groups of people. So they would hold a smaller piece of the pie, um, but folks really do find value in these things and particularly with mentorship. Um, so it's a, it's a program that I think I see somebody really loves the mentorship program, right? So something that we can continue to pour our energy into. And actually last year, um, we uh, launched a pilot program that was a pilot mentorship program aimed at higher education students. Um, so that's something that we're looking forward to, you know, continuing to grow as an organization um, in, the, in the coming years. Uh, next slide, please. All right, um, so I believe this is the last um, slide that I have for you. So when we asked you, um, you know, for your general thoughts, what you want to see more of, what you want to see less of, and just some of your general comments, um, there were a few themes that really kind of rose to the forefront, and I wanted to share those with you here. Um, so one that was very strong is, you know, an increased uh, representation of folks who identify as disabled and or as uh, POC, wanting to see a balance between in-person and virtual events, um, especially given that there is a really big accessibility piece when it comes to virtual events. Um, folks are wanting to see some more hands-on opportunities, so say job training. I know our how to prepare for a technical interview workshop or seminar is one of our popular offerings, so maybe being able to offer you know, some more of those really hands-on type of opportunities to help folks bridge that gap um, in finding their jobs. Um, and then, you know, going back to that uh, graph I showed of all the different roles that folks have, um, trying to find a way to really represent the myriad of tech career pathways there are out there. Um, so I think when we think of tech, we tend to be biased towards, say, the programmers. Um, and while they are the single largest group, they're not the only folks um, who are in tech and they're, you know, so um, being able to kind of show folks w where all the possibilities are. Um, so um, I think that is all I have for you in terms of um, kind of reporting out results. One thing you can be looking forward to in February is our impact report, which will contain um, some of these numbers. Um, and then just a wider look of, um, you know, our community, this organization's accomplishments in 2023. Um, so with that, I want to thank you again for your attention, and I am going to uh, yield the virtual floor uh, to my colleague Hazel, who will uh, talk about some of her reflections on 2023, talk about 2024 maybe a little bit, and then we can move into a, a group Q&A. Thank you, everyone. Uh, uh, like Isabel said, and as Yolanda also iterated, if you have questions, please feel free to put it in chat. Uh, regarding uh, 2023, interesting year, hard year for PDX WIT. I want to say financially, we did not meet our goals to help us uh, create more robust programs in 2024. What it boils down to is our members love PDX WIT, and I'm hoping our members recognize the work we've done for the community, um, as well as that capacity, hopefully, within your control to um, consider a donating at some point for the organization. With that said, last year, the strategy for the organization was to 
reimagine, rebuild. And what that meant for me coming in as a the executive director was really look at the processes that were in place or not in place and stabilize the organization because they had gone without leadership for seven months. And what did that mean for the staff and how to rebuild and get us to a place where from a public, public relations standpoint, you remember PDX would exist. Beyond that, it is incumbent of us as an organization with our board strat um, direction and, well, excuse, not direction, strat strategic goals to help us see what 2024 will look like. Um, we have hopes that we can create better programming, um, but with those hopes, I really want to stress that a nonprofit only exists as much as its funding comes through the door. And PDXWID is not the only organization struggling um, with those questions and answers of how are we going to survive if we don't have that kind of support from our members and our community at large. Um, the goal is better programming, um, possible networking events that will oh, more virtual events, we think. Um, and then if it is an in-person event, more time for all of you to um, network and get to know each other within the community. Uh, we struggled in 2023 from our sponsor base to um, get their recruiters to come out to our in-person events because no one was hiring. Again, the state of the economic, the economic state of our not only community, but maybe our state and beyond is really very telling. Um, and it starts with this member survey. It was sent out to approximately 8,000 folks in a 1.2, thank you, Olga, for that number, 1.2% um, response rate is dismal. Um, so what is, it's kind of the um, chicken and the egg scenario. If PDX wit is important to the members and to the community, it was, sad to see that the number of responses came out to 96. And um, why is that? Was it the timing? Maybe because of the months we had it open, but genuinely our newsletters go out like clockwork. Information is fed through our social media and one-off digests and or newsletters that our comms team has put together. And our events has been, my goal in last year was, you know, pretty much a, uh, let's remind the community that PDX would exist. And I'm, um, and, and we did that part, but what didn't happen was kind of also telling with regards to our funding through GiveGuide. It was a $50,000 goal. We hit 39% of that. And thank you everyone who supported PDX with, through that um, because it, 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 what, it's de what it's doing is really setting up some really tough discussions with our board to see how we're gonna move forward. I'm gonna leave it at that because that's pretty much where we are. I, we don't have a budget. We are working on projections and um, really, really honestly and realistically looking at how you all can engage with us to be sustainable, if that. 